Book Bites presents to you a book summary of David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. For Goggins, childhood was not meant for playing with children abroad. His childhood consisted of successive traumas caused by a violent abusive father and a life of poverty. From here, we can predict a life of poverty filled with poverty and depression, but the opposite is what happened. Goggins defied all odds through self-discipline, mental toughness, and hard work. He overcame an obese, depressed young man with no future by committing himself to losing weight and improving his degrees. Goggins became an icon in the United States Army and one of the world's top endurance athletes in his book, Can't Hurt Me. Cher Goggins is his amazing story and charts for us a path that anyone can follow to get rid of his fears and doubts and push his limits to the maximum so that he can live the life he wants. Chapter 1, A Harsh Childhood and a Difficult Adolescence Goggins did not enjoy the ideal childhood between playing with peers and the tenderness of his family. On the contrary, he lived a life of slavery under his violent abusive father who forced the entire family to work in the skating rink that he owned, and of course, Goggins was not an exception. At the age of six, he worked in the care of skate shoes and, after he finished his work, he slept every day at midnight in the office at the rink. He hardly slept because of the noise of the skaters and the loud music. He often slept in class at school because of that. Is that all? No. Goggins was subjected to violence and beatings by his father frequently and continuously, as well as a witness to his mother's exposure to physical and psychological violence. If he intervened to defend her, he also received his share of beatings and abuse. At the age of eight, his mother fled with her to Indiana so that they could start a new life together, but after a short time, they found out that they had moved to one of the most racist places in America. He was the only black-skinned boy in town and quickly became the target of ridicule and racist hatred. He heard rude and cruel insults, and he was even at times threatening with weapons. He didn't seem to his life is improving in any way, and because of all suffered. Goggins was suffering from a nervous stutter and hair loss and the change in the color of the skin, and Goggins did not understand the cause of these symptoms. In Rahafkath, he realized that he suffers speeches that are what we might call the poison anxiety and is a condition affecting they were in the childhood of violence and abuse, leading to change the chemistry brain, and among the many results of this change can lead to the possibility of memory loss and difficulty in learning and retention of information. Because of his status, Goggins was in a special section for people with special needs in middle school and was in his teenage years could hardly read. Chapter 2, The Mirror of Accountability in high school, Goggins began to have a dream of his own to join the U.S. Air Force, and that was after meeting one of those forces, but it was no more than just a dream. At that stage, he felt that achieving this is far because joining the Air Force requires talents and his level of education was what he thought he lacked. Just passing the Armed Forces entrance test meant that Goggins had to relearn everything he had learned in the last 10 years. One day he looked at the mirror at home for a long time and hated himself and the state he had reached. He wanted to change, he decided to start his appearance, shaved his head and then a new wardrobe for his clothes and then came scraps of paper and wrote on each one of them what he must do to successfully pass the armed forces test. He began with small things that can be easily achieved like, clean your room every day, and then included in the difficult tasks on the paper, such as running a certain number of miles. That's what he called Goggins. This accountability mirror turned the lives of Goggins. College was the beginning of everyday ritual, practice standing in front of the mirror in order to remind him of what he accomplished yesterday and his mission and his goal. He began studying and training daily, and he did not let any time pass without investing it to achieve his goals. Although Goggins had many limiting factors, he believed that his future could be changed, and in the end, he was able to pass the Air Force exam and was on his way to join it, but to complete his training to enter the armed forces, he had to pass the swimming test. Goggins had a fear of large water, one of the most difficult in his life, and he could reach the degree of phobias when the military training session began. The fear of injury paralyzed him, and he began to fail in swimming tests. After a short period, a routine medical examination revealed that Goggins suffers from sickle cell anemia, and this was a good excuse for him to leave the armed forces. Chapter 3, 
changing his entire life. After Goggins left the armed forces, he now works as a cockroach exterminator and weighs about 300 pounds. In one of the hard days of work in the fight against cockroaches, he began to ask himself how he ended up like this. That day, Goggins watched a documentary about military units of the U.S. Navy called Navy SEALs, which is one of the most powerful units in the world with the most difficult exercises and physical and mental tests, and to join them would have been among the best. Goggins was amazed at the toughness and persistence of the Navy SEALs, and before the documentary was even finished, he decided to join these units and started making calls. After a short time, he realized he was too fat to join them, but the training program's admission closes only in 90 days. Goggins had to lose 107 pounds in less than 90 days if he wanted a chance to become a member of the Navy SEALs, which means he had to lose more than one pound every day for the next 90 days. Goggins implemented a strict fitness regime that woke up every day at 4 o'clock in the morning and trained for two hours on the bike and then trained in the nearest swimming pool for two hours as well and then went to the gym to train his muscles harshly. His training is not over yet, he spends the rest of his day on the training, and after dinner, Goggins made a new accountability system to fight his doubts and negative thoughts that he can't do that. Goggins succeeded, yes, he did it. He reached the required weight and joined the six-month training program for the Navy SEALs. Goggins was in a similar environment for young friendliness, and of course, before Goggins tasked proudly, he began to focus on developing himself in the recruitment and rhetoric, but there was always the problem, he needs more. How can he push himself to be at the top of the performance again? Of course, he can no longer compete in the marathon with his pierced heart. Goggins knew that the world record in urine abs exercise is 2,021 times in 24 hours, after two failed attempts. He was able to break the world record in 20 from January 2013. So how to become unfamiliar versus unfamiliar, what is your goal? And what distinguishes you from the rest? Be unique and be among the best. Chapter 6, The Power of Our Minds Goggins challenged all mathematically obstacles and was doomed to a life of gloom and misery and failure. Many of those who live childhood and adolescence are similar to what went through Goggins or even less, become addicted or criminals or psychologists or all patients. So, how did Goggins manage to do it? He will tell you that it was his daily decisions that allowed him to overcome obstacles and lead him to live a successful life, even though he had no advantage at the beginning of his life to set him on that. How can you unleash your true potential? There is no secret to success. You simply have to work hard and have a total commitment to achieving your goals. At one point, Goggins could barely read and was working on cockroaches and weighed 300 pounds. Then he lost weight. He studied hard to enter the Navy training program. He did it simply by waking up in the morning and accomplishing what he almost accomplished. Most of us are adept at finding excuses, but daily life problems are a part of life and not an excuse for not doing something. If you want to accomplish something, you have to take advantage of the early morning to the maximum degree. A typical day for Goggin starts at 4 in the morning and then he runs 6 to 10 miles. Then he comes home, showers, breaks his fast, gets ready for work, then rides his bike 25 miles to work, and gets to his office at 7.30. During lunch break, he does a full day at the gym or runs 6 miles on the beach. After work, he cycles back home at 25, at 7 p.m. Goggins has cycled at least 50 miles and ran at least 10 miles and finished the 9 to 5 daily shift. Everyone has 24 hours a day, and it's up to you to use it wisely. Goggins finds that as soon as you own your morning, you increase the possibility of achieving your goals, and once you reach a goal, you should not stop there, but you should look to the next achievement by pushing your limits and aspirations for the next achievement. You not only reach your goals, but you will find peace and happiness. Listen to a summary of David Goggins' Cannot Hurt Me book.